Good morning, everybody. Again, welcome to Strategic Sunday, my favorite day of the week. So glad each of you are here. If you missed last week or the week before, go back to the YouTube channel. You can always find the replays on the YouTube channel as we were talking about the different plagues that God uh, uh, was revealing to us um, as it related to the Egyptian times, but also what that looks like in our now. Um, we've been seeing a lot of things happening in our world, but ultimately the main message I wanted you to get from that was how when God gives you an assignment, when God speaks to you, he will back up his word. And what we took from the lesson with the plagues is the understanding that God is not confined to geographical locations. God is not confined to just the laws of the land. God will defy odds for you. He will back you up. If he told you to do something, you can rest assured that he is going to back you up. He will change nature. He will shift the winds and the waves to accommodate that which he has called you to do. So you don't ever have to worry about anything. If God called you to do it, understand that he will back you up. You don't have to defend yourself. You don't have to make anybody believe you. You don't have to come out of character. Just do that which God has called you to do. So if you missed that, go ahead and go to the YouTube channel. Um, and, and you can catch up there. I'm going to pray as today's assignment is more of a prophetic assignment. The Lord told me to speak into your September. We have four days left until we hit the month of September. And the Lord also wants me to show you how to discern seasons and how to discern the time and understanding how the world that we live in is always prophesying. Yes, you need prophets, pastors, teachers, and all of that. However, God has anointed you with eyes to see, ears to hear. He gave you a spirit. He gave you wisdom. He gave you discernment. And I want you to understand that every day of your life, when you walk outside, when seasons change, change, the weather, all of that. The world around you is prophesying, but will you perceive it? Or are you looking at it as just, oh, today's a hot day, or that's a cold day, and blah, 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 blah. But understand that that everything around you is prophesying. And so God wants me to speak into your September and give you a few tools so that way you understand what is happening in the world around you. For those of you coming in, if you have not dropped your prayer request, you can drop your prayer request in the chat. If it's private, you can send it to me directly or text the text group that we have. But our Father, our God, we bless you. And we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time. We thank you for this moment to gain information, to gain wisdom, to get prophetic uh, instruction, God, for our day, for our tomorrow, and for our next. God, I ask that you anoint our ears so we can hear on the frequency that you would want us to hear. Anoint our eyes so we can see in the realm of the spirit that which others cannot see. But God, order our steps as your word says. Your word says you're a light unto our path and a lamp unto our feet. So Father, with your word, with your wisdom, with your guidance. Lead us in the direction that we should go. Father, help us to get out of our own way. Help us to get out of our own head. Help us to get out of our emotions and our feelings that would distract us from the revelation you are trying to get to us. Help us to understand that warfare and trials and tribulations, when they come, they are simply coming to our lives for a couple of things, either as a test to perfect that which you've already given us, or it could be a distraction. So Father, help us to discern what's happening so we know when to move, how to move, the cadence in which we should move, because all of that is important. Father, I even pray, Father, that as we get ready to end a month and go into another month, that you would uh, uh, continue to remove the people and the things out of our life that are not supposed to go with us into this next season. Father, remove all of the baggage, remove all of the weight, remove all of the burdens, remove anybody and anything that does not mean us any well. 
Father, reveal to us our, 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 our people for our next season, our partnerships for our next season, the resources for our next season, Father, and help us to not be afraid to move swiftly as you make revelation to us as to what we are to do, because we understand that everything is time sensitive and it is syncopated. And so, Father, we want to remain in your divine timetable. We do not want to be distracted. We do not want to be burdened. We do not want to fall off, but we want to stay in your divine timetable. So, Father, again, show us what to do, when to do, and how to do it. Father, I even ask that however you speak to each of your people, be it in dreams, be it in visions, be it through music, that you would activate that level of acuity in them so they can perceive your dreams properly and perceive the visions properly because, God, we are living in such a crucial time. I don't know about anybody else, but I'm seeing some very strange things in this dispensation. I'm hearing strange language. I'm seeing strange movement. And Father, there's so much happening where people are seeming like they're preaching your word, but they have a hidden agenda or they're singing your songs, but they have an ulterior motive. So Father, anoint our ears and our minds to even discern that what sounds good might not be good. How the saying goes, everything that glitter isn't gold. Help us be able to discern what's gold and what's fake, what's real and what's phony, what's different, what's you and what's not you. And so, Father, we, we, we ask that you anoint us to not follow the trends, but you, you will make us trendsetters. Let us not be afraid to do something different, but also help us to stand flat foot when we know it's you and not getting distracted by the false uh, uh, activities of the world. And so, Father, we just bless you and thank you. And every prayer request that was mentioned, Father, both privately and that are publicly, God, I ask that you make intercession on each individual now. I'm looking at your comments here to look at the prayers and I see each of them. Father, the private ones, God, I ask that you rectify, heal, and deliver right now in the name of Jesus. So Father, we bless you and thank you. And if you agree with that prayer, type, shout, write, amen, amen, and amen. And write this down, y'all, and say it to yourself. I will be in God's divine timetable. I will be in God's divine timetable. That's sticking out to me as, again, there is so much transitioning happening in our world that will try to get us off kilter and off track, but we will remain in God's divine timetable. So listen, y'all, Um, y'all know how I flow. I don't know if I'm preaching today or not. It's more of a prophetic release, as God told me, to speak into your month of September. We have four days left until the month of September. And the Lord instructed me to prophesy and speak into September, as well as help you examine seasons, change, and how to properly apply the global cycles of life to your life. As I stated earlier, the world we live in is always prophesying, but we miss it. And although we thank God for the prophets, the pastors, and all of that, the Bible says, how can you hear without a, a, a preacher and all that? Yes, but don't dumb yourself down. Y'all know I, I, I say this all the time. God has anointed you. You are called with or without a title. You are anointed with or without a title. And I need you to tap into your prophetic genius that God has wired on the inside of you. If you ever walk in a room and you're like, man, I can sense that something's off or you feel the tension in the room. How could you feel that tension? It's because the spiritual acumen that you have is activated, but you're just either not trained in it or know how to decipher it, but you are wired. That's why you walk up to certain people and you're like, it's something about them I just can't get with. It's because your spirit is trying their spirit and somewhere within their spirit, you both are not with one accord. It doesn't always mean it's bad, but it could just mean that person's not good for you and it's okay, you know, and vice versa. It's okay. And so just as you will engage different people, you can discern the times. Just yesterday, if you've been in that Atlanta or really anywhere it's been hot as I don't know what it's been crazy and I want to say it was either Wednesday or Thursday of this week 
It was hot. We're sweating bullets. I drive home and all of a sudden it starts raining, but then it's with hail, big pieces of hail that were hitting my car to the point where I sat in the car for a minute because I said, you, you ain't about to knock me out. <laughs> we're not doing that. Wait a minute. You know, but, but it just goes to show how crazy things are where it's hot and we're sweating bullets and literally within 15 minutes, it's now hail. It's crazy. But what I'm trying to get you to also understand, it's a sign of the times and you must pay attention to what's happening around you. Matthew 6 and 13, Matthew 6 and 13, we see where Jesus criticizes the religious leaders for not being able to interpret the signs and the times. I'm not going to really open that for now, but write it in your notes so that way you can check it out at a later time. But then also in Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8, which is a familiar passage of scripture, we see how we, in this scripture, um, how it says there's, there's a time, there's a season for everything under the heavens. And then also in 1 Thessalonians 5, 1 through 6, it encourages believers to be watchful and sober, aware of the signs of the times and living in the light. I just want to use those three passages of scripture as a backdrop to show you that one of our mandates is to be sober minded. It's to be watchful. It's to be prayerful. It's to pay attention so we can understand what is happening in our world and not just watchful and mindful and sober minded watching social media media because understand on social media it is not as social as it seems anymore. When social media was first introduced, you could post your pictures, you could post your comments, and it was as simple as that. But we now understand that as uh, social media has really become a monster or a marketing and branding uh, 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 device, if you will, people may or may not see your post because of the way the algorithm is set up. What does that mean that means someone behind the scenes is trying to determine what you even see on your social media and your page so you're thinking oh i just saw this no you didn't just see it you saw it because someone is dictating what you get to see so with that knowledge, I'm not saying social media is bad. I'm just giving you that knowledge so you understand you cannot go to social media as your platform to build your discernment. What God is doing in this next dispensation, you must go to the Lord in prayer. You must discern. You must fast. You must pray so you can understand what is happening in the world around you. Even be careful with all the conferences and events that you go to. I've said this before. There is so much strange fire and so much strange things happening that people might set out. Look, anybody can grab the Bible and read the word of the Lord. I don't know, I wanna grab my Bible today. Anybody can read the Bible and read the word of the Lord and the word will do the work. But you have to have spiritual acumen and discernment to, to understand what is the intent of the deliverer of the word. What is the motive? I know tons of pastors and leaders and no disrespect, but that if they're getting ready to unveil something, what they'll do is begin to prep you weeks before with scripture to bait your mind to get ready to receive the change or whatever's to come. People do it in psychotherapy all the time and psychology all the time, but I don't pastor, coach, or mentor a dumb people. And so I understand my conversations and my words to you will always be very direct and will be the truth because I need you to understand what's happening around you. So let me get to where we're going today. Uh, as I mentioned, good morning to all those that, that came in. God wants me to speak to your month of September. The month of September represents a, a, a various things, but it's the beginning of autumn. It's the beginning of fall. Um, it's associated with cooler temperatures. It's associated with the falling of leaves. You see the colors of the leaves change colors and all of that. But what I want you to understand is as simple as that might sound, that's a prophetic uh, unction 
from the world, from the earth, from the trees. They prophesy, right? So you might think and say, okay, it's cooler temperatures. What does that mean? Cooler temperatures coming from a hot season, it represents transition. It represents a shifting of energy. It represents the shifting and the approaching of winter, but from a hot season. But what could that mean to you? Let's look at it. Again, we know it's been so, so hot outside. But now it's as if God is saying, okay, whatever that pressure, whatever that heat you were under, whatever that trying situation is that you were dealing with, it's about to shift. It's about to let up. Now, apply whatever you feel for your life. I'm just giving you a blanket sheet to help you understand what this means. When you look at the falling of the leaves um, in the autumn season, it's often a sign of change. It's a sign of letting go. It's the cycle of life. And so don't think it's strange as you enter this fall season and you go into the month of September that you start seeing certain people and things fall off of your life, that you start seeing different thoughts and patterns fall out of your life, spirits of depression falling out of your life. Let me even say this. They are predicting now that in 2025, we will have global depression at an all time high. They're not only predicting it, but they're setting patterns and things up for that to happen. That's how specific this is. I was I forget the gentleman's name I was watching the other day, but they are already projecting that financially, if you have stocks and bonds and things of that sort, that, there, that there's going to be a plummet. And so financial issues are going to heighten global depression. Weight issues, imagery, imagery is going to do all that. I've told you how on social media with all the filters and all that, every time you look at a filter, or you see a beautiful woman or you see a handsome man or whatever in your subconscious mind, you start uh, 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 messing with yourself and you don't even realize it. And it's been proven that you go into about 2.3 seconds of depression because of the spirit of comparison. So with the heightening of social media, the heightening of financial um, um, issues and all of that, they are predicting that. But I'm telling you now, so you can begin to discern the times and make a plan for yourself and your families. So that way, when the world is dealing with that, you can say, not near my dwelling. Not, not me. I'm not dealing with that because you are able to discern the times, discern the times. Same thing with the color changing of the leaves and all of that. That represents beauty. It represents, uh, uh, again, change, transformation. Um, it represents all of these different things. September is also a month that we call harvest time. Harvest time is some, uh, Symbolic to abundance, gratitude, and the fruition of your hard work. And so in the summer seasons, the heat, it represents hard work. But now you're getting ready to go into the season of your harvest. If you planted the seed, then you can command a harvest. It's really as simple as that. You don't have to just say, Lord, am I going to get my abundance? Am I going to get my harvest? Well, did you plant a seed? Did you do work? Did you put your labor in? Were you fasting? Were you doing that? Typically in the summer months, historically, that's when a lot of work happens as well. So whatever you did in the former season is the prophetic junction of what's coming for the next. You can prophesy for yourself. It's not that deep. If you did this then, then you can get that now. That's the prophetic word. What did you put in? And if you don't like what you put in, then you already know you're not going to like what your harvest looks like. But here's the, the, the place to shout. You can change it. You can change it. If you don't like it, discern the times, discern your life right now, and you can change it. Also, in the month of September, we see people who are in the northern states going back to school, um, one thing I did want to point out to you all, because in the text message group and on Facebook, all I kept hearing is that we're entering a realm of peace. We're entering a new place of peace. I had no idea that in September, September 21st, it's recognized as the International Day of Peace. So mark it in your calendar if you didn't know. September 21st is the International Day of Peace. 
The other part I want you to understand is that September is the ninth month, which we know is the month to birth. So biblically speaking, number nine represents finality. It represents completeness. It represents divine fulfillment. So I want you to look at this next month you are going into and, and begin to assess and thank God in advance for all of the things that you've prayed for, all of the things you've been working for, hitting in the realm of the spirit first, a place of finality and divine fulfillment. So it is in the heavens, so it is on earth. So also, biblically speaking, we see the fruit of the spirit. We see in Galatians 5, 22 and 23, the apostle Paul List nine characteristics known as the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. We also see with the number nine, the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. In 1 Corinthians 12, 8 through 10, Paul mentions nine spiritual gifts given by the Holy Spirit, which is wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits and speaking in tongues and interpretation of tongues. We also see Jesus' death on the cross. According to the gospel account, Jesus was crucified on the ninth hour, which symbolizes the completion of his mission and fulfillment of God's plan for salvation. We also see the nine B attitudes in Matthew 5, 3 through 11. Jesus pronounces nine blessings known as the B attitudes, which describes the characteristics and blessings of those who follow him. And so what I wanted you to see is what nine looks like going into the ninth month and the month of September. So your assignment this week today is I want you to write down nine things that you want to accomplish, change, or birth. I'm going to say it again. I want you to write down nine things that you want to accomplish, change or birth out in the month of September. After you do that, I want you to create action steps of completion. At this present moment, we have four days left until September. And I don't know the fullness of why God's not letting me necessarily preach today, but he said to speak into your September and give you these steps because we have to be able to discern the time. There are certain things that are necessary. I told you all how June 26, really before then, I knew I had to go back to school. And I told you all, all the warfare I had when I tried to register for school that I didn't even get into my courses until two weeks later. But I did not allow the warfare of the time to get me off of God's divine timetable. I had every reason to give up because I technically missed the date. But that second week of July, it kept ringing June 26. I know it's over, but I said June 26. I know they're blocking you, but I said June 26. So that made me fight and push. And I told you all when I called back, they then said, we're not supposed to let you in, but we're going to create this option for you. So because of my push and discerning what the Lord said, it opened up an option that wasn't even available. And what I need you to understand is as you move in God's divine timetable and discern the times, he will open doors and options for you, but they're only available for the called and chosen ones who aren't afraid to push. You have to keep pushing. There's an acronym for push. Pray until something happens. Move until something happens. Ask until something happens. Knock until someone opens the door. Quit giving up. Your harvest in September will be a replica of what you did before. Did you knock? Did you fast? Did you pray? Did you sow? Did you research? And don't just apply this for September. September is coming up, so we're speaking to September. But in general, understand and discern the times. Jesus was upset in the book of Matthew with the religious leaders of that time because they could not discern his coming. They could not. You're supposed to be the religious leader and you could not understand or perceive that Jesus was the son of God. But you sit in a seat of authority, but you're sitting in government, 
but you're so anointed. That's the day and age we're look, when, looking at now. God's about to move you into different places and spaces. And some of those people will not be able to recognize who you are. That is your tell all sign that those are the leaders and the organizations that you are not supposed to associate with. Because if you're trying the spirit by the spirit, you'll be able to know. You'll be able to know. And I want to encourage you, trust what you know. Stop second guessing yourself. Trust what you know. You feel it in your gut. You feel it in your spirit. You're getting goosebumps when you walk into certain spaces or see certain things or hear certain things. Trust what you know and stop dumbing yourself down. You are wired this way. I've told you all before, there's a thing called grounding where it's been proven that if you put your bare feet on the grass or your bare feet on the sand, that science, I forget the tool, but there's a tool where they can scientifically see the energy in your body increase as your physical body is standing on the earth. God has wired us to be in tune with the earth and to be in tune with his spirit to discern the comings and the goings and the shiftings and the changing of time. I'm also a firm believer that especially when you look at September being the ninth month and the number nine representing birthing. When you realize the time, it'll make it easier for you to push. You might be feeling a spirit of resistance when you're trying to push in a different season because that's not a birthing season. Are you getting what I'm saying? I'm speaking metaphorically, spiritually, and kind of practically. However, understand that there are certain seasons for birthing. That's why at the end of the year, if you own a business or you look at a lot of Fortune 500 companies, at the last quarter of the year, they're shutting down and planning for the next. Why do you think, I even say this because those of you who know my spiritual mother and you know Injure Year Strong, there's a reason why Injure Year Strong, the conference is hosted in December every year. It's because the way you end a thing is how you birth into a new thing at the top of the year. In business, you end and you plan and calendar for the next. And if you don't calendar for 2024, before 2024 ends, you're going to wonder why 2024 is chaotic. You don't wait to get there to plan. You plan ahead of time. So that's why I'm giving you this now. You've got four days before September. What do you want to birth out? What do you want to change? What do you discern in your spirit? So you're not just discerning the times at large, but then you're discerning what does this look like for me in my city, in my country, in my home, in my business? What is this looking like? So for me, y'all already know November 3rd, we're having our first in-person gathering. It's interesting because logistically in the month of September, I'm doing the last finalizations as this is birthed out in the realm of the spirit, but the manifestation will take place November 3rd. Are you getting what I'm saying? So whatever it is you're trying to work on, this is the month, this is the time to write it out and plan. Even if you're going to plan for 2024, I would admonish you plan for it now. Let September be the birthing month in terms of your ideas and your concepts and your strategies for 2024. And then create action steps for the remainder of this year to make sure you hit the ground running. Also understand you're on your timetable with God's divine timetable. What am I saying? Don't compare your time to my time. Don't compare Ruthie's time with Jocelyn's time or Anthony's time with Andrea's time. You are all on different times. We are collectively in a time of birthing, but the way you birth and the way I birth is going to look different. You're not in a competition. You're not in a race. Free yourself from that because the enemy will use that to rob you because you're now trying to birth out because so-and-so's birthing out and now you birthed a premature baby which now produces other complications. Don't rush. Rush to plan. 
So what I'm saying is with this birth thing in this ninth month and going to September, I'm not, for some of you, you will legitimately birth out a baby. You will birth out a dream. For some of you, it's birthing out the concept. Are you with me? You're, it's birthing out the idea. It's birthing out the strategy. So even those of you who wrote your visions for this year, this is a good time to go back to your vision boards, go back to your vision books and start asking God, what does this look like now? Because seasons are changing. Seasons are changing. So here it is, y'all. I am believing and decreeing and declaring over you that September will be a month of birthing out. It will be a month where all of the pressure you've been feeling all year long and in the summer season, it's going to make sense for you. You're going to understand that what felt like it was breaking you down was really birthing you out. You're going to understand that those tears, that pain, those ups and those downs and those emotions and feelings, it was all to birth out what's coming next. I'm decreeing and declaring that you will carry your dream well. You will carry your vision well. You will have the right partnerships and relationships. I'm decreeing and declaring that you will discern the times. You will know your divine timetable with God. You will be in syncopation with God. You will be at every destiny moment. And when you walk in the room, you'll be able to discern the spirit of him or her that you're supposed to collaborate with. I'm decreeing and declaring that you are coming into your process proper alignment with your destiny partners, with the movers and shakers that you're supposed to work with. I'm decreeing and declaring that you are entering the season of healthy relationships, healthy business deals, healthy partnerships, healthy all the way around. I'm decreeing and declaring that when your pen hits your paper, that God's spirit will flow through you prophetically with wisdom, with instruction, with strategy, with insight, so you can plan effectively. I'm decreeing and declaring that even what you don't have the money for, the strategy and the wisdom of God that will come from you will be all the finances that you need because it will call people from the north, the south, the east, and the the West that say, I want to buy into Chalet's vision. I want to buy into Tanya's vision. I want to buy into Katrina's vision. I want to buy into Aaliyah and Jocelyn's vision. I want to buy into Jones's vision. I want to buy into Nadine and April's vision, Monique and Nikki and HD's vision. I want to buy into your vision. I want to support what you're doing because even if you don't have the money or the resources, you have the prophetic download and the instruction of the Lord. And the Bible says, his word does not return void. And so if he says you have a word, his word will grab the funding. His word will grab the underwriters. His word will grab the resources. His word will grab. So I'm decreeing and declaring that as you go into this next month and you go into this next dispensation, that the underwriters are being birthed out. The supporters are being birthed out. The finances are being birthed out. The vision is being birthed out. And there is no gate in heaven that has the power to supersede the wisdom and the power of the word of our Lord. His word does not return void. Write that, type that, shout that. His word does not return void. I'm decreeing and declaring that even in the month of September, as I stated earlier, that, you, that, that there are so many false teachers out here. There are strange things going on that right now, but you will be able to discern who is is who because they might speak a word word, but it doesn't mean it's the Lord's word. And you'll be able to know it's the Lord's word because the Lord's word does not return void. You will see fruit in this next season. You will see increase in this next season. You will see acceleration in this next season. You will see proof, tangible proof in this next season. You will also know you're in the right place because as you put one foot in front of the other obeying God, he will accompany you with peace, supernatural peace that surpasses all understanding. When other people look at you like you're crazy, the peace of God will 
will reassure you that you are in the right place. When other people are saying, that's crazy, you're weird, it doesn't make sense, how did you know that? You will know because you will be accompanied by peace that surpasses all understanding. While they're in a storm, while they're dealing with plagues, you will be in supernatural peace. And they'll say, hey, what are you doing that you are peaceful right now? And you'll be able to say, I'm in God's divine timetable. I'm in my right season because I've discerned the times and I'm not distracted by social media. I'm not uh, uh, distracted by fashion trends. I'm not distracted by these people on social media who are quote unquote pastors, but yet trying to fight against each other and do stuff to go viral. We don't have to do that because we are sons and daughters of the word of God and the word will not return void. I speak to your ears and I command your ears to hear on a higher level. I speak to your spirit and I command your spirit to discern on a higher level. I speak to your mouth and I command your mouth to speak a different language, a kingdom language that's in the frequency of God. I command your eyes to see. I command your legs to walk. I command your spirit to soar. I command everything about you to be in divine alignment and birth out. Go forth, come forth and be who you're called to be. We decree that, we declare that, we establish that. Birthing of new relationships, birthing of new partnerships, birthing of visions and dreams. We will discern the times. We'll know when to go. We'll know when to stop. We'll plan properly. We'll be more effective this time. But those of you who started writing your vision and got distracted, pick it back up and just start where you left off. We're decreeing and declaring that this is the season you come out of comparison and comparing yourself to other people. Well, I don't sing like them. Who cares? Well, I don't dance like them. Who cares? Well, I don't preach like them. Who cares? Well, I don't do this like them. Who cares? This is the season that you are birthed into your authentic self. This is the season that you love yourself and appreciate yourself. This is the moment that you be who you're called to be and are no longer afraid and again, comparing yourself. Don't do that this time. This is your harvest time. I decree and declare as well, every seed you've sown financially, every, every, every effort you've made, your time, your energy, that you will get a harvest. I decree and declare double for your trouble. You will get increase off your seed, whether it come back financially, whether it come back as a vision, an idea, a partnership. I'm decreeing and declaring that every seed you've sown and that you will sow, again, Again, of finances, of your time, of your prayers, of your fasting, you will receive a harvest. We don't have to ask God permission for a harvest. If you put seed in the ground, it demands a harvest. So we decree and declare that which was done, it will produce fruit in the name of Jesus. And I come against every spirit that would try to have crop failure against your seed. We send crop failure back to the sender. Every negative word, every dream killer, vision snatcher that has tried to come against you, we boomerang that thing back to them. It will not touch you, it will not harm you, it will not come near you. Every word curse, every principality, every demonic force, it cannot touch you. You are plague proof. You are covered. You are covered. And we come against every internal self-sabotaging thought that will try to seduce you out of your harvest and your increase. You will not malfunction. You will not have a stillbirth. You will not abort your vision, your baby, your dream. But you will carry full term and you will birth this thing out. I even heard the Lord say your prayer life is about to increase. Many of you have been praying, keep praying. 
Be more intentional with your prayers. Again, don't compare yourself. I tell people all the time who've seen me or know me, don't try to sound like me. Don't try to do that. Just go with power. The last time y'all prayed for me when I was having a moment, I heard the increase in your prayer. But the Lord said you're about to hit another level in your prayer and in your intercession. And that is a clear indication of the wisdom of God coming upon you because the way you get wisdom and discernment is through prayer. Everything is birthed through the loins of prayer. If it's not birthed through prayer, it's illegal. So may God anoint you and increase your prayer life to not just know what to say, but know when to pray. Understanding that your prayer is a weapon. It's a technology that is not confined to any geographical location. But your prayer can do what you can't do. As I stated earlier, what you don't have the money for, your prayer will handle it. Because your prayers will be laced with the word of the Lord and his word does not return void. Don't just pray what you want to pray. Pray his word. That's the strategy. His word won't return void. Everything I'm decreeing and declaring over you and speaking over you, it's the word. It's not my opinion. It's not my thoughts. It's the word. It's the word. Yes, Lord. Amen. I'm sorry. I see your comment, Jocelyn, about the resistance and prayer. Yeah, and we're coming against that. That's how you know that that's where you're supposed to move. Yes, April. I see your comment, too. Yes. The enemy will always fight you in your place of power. So if you feel resistance in prayer, it's because that's your place of power. But every believer, that's your place of power because prayer is our technology. Prayer is our secret weapon. It's prayer. I've seen it happen. Anybody who's ever tried to do me dirty or cause harm, God dealt with them by way of prayer. Now, I didn't wish no harm because I don't wish harm on anybody. Even the people that have done me dirty, I don't wish harm on them. But it's a principle. If you sow negative seed, you're going to get a negative harvest. If you sow discord and dysfunction, then you're going to have a harvest of discord and dysfunction. So listen, I pray this blessed you. I'm not going to keep you. I do want to open the floor for any comments real quick. I do have another service to run to again today, y'all. It's been crazy. But I want you to do like I told you. Write down for the month of September the areas that you want to change, birth, or transition. And I want you to go back to the scriptures I listed at the beginning and do your own research and begin to look through the word of God at how the world around you prophesies. You don't just need someone to tell you. And, I, and I'm I'm stressing that because I watch so many people who are like, oh, I can't do this unless I talk to so-and-so or so, whatever. No, talk to God for yourself. You can hit me up, text me. You can hit me up and I'll confirm what God said. But I want you to stand on your own two feet and hear what God said to you. You got it. You got it. The same God that speaks to me and your favorite preacher is the same God that speaks to you. And if you need me to come into agreement with you and align with you and confirm that you're hearing right or just challenge your thought in a healthy way or whatever, by all means, this is why iron sharpens iron. This is why we meet week after week so we can come together in prayer and be inspired and uplifted to go back into our sphere of influence and do what we're called to do. So pay attention, discern the times. Look at the different seasons. And let me say this. When I'm talking about seasons, we're talking about from a spiritual place. We're not talking about zodiac signs. We're not talking about voodoo and witchcraft and all that stuff. That is not what I'm referring to. And I'm putting that out there because as you research, you will see a combination of those things. I'm giving you Bible. That's what I'm giving you. I am not suggesting anything outside of that. So discern seasons. You can even look historically in culture, your country, your city, different things that have transpired at certain times. I told you all, whenever I go to a different country or state for ministry, I pray and I establish my legal jurisdiction to be there. Because when you go into a new region, there are principalities that are over certain regions. And if God is sending you to be an answer to a problem that is in that city, that location, you're going to feel resisting powers work against you because the enemy does not want you to be the solution that they prayed for. 
Just like with Moses, God sent Moses. When, when, when they prayed for a deliverer, God raised up Moses. But then Moses faced resistance. So then God backed Moses up with the plagues so that Pharaoh would eventually let God's people go. You're going to feel resistance, but resistance is not a sign to stop. Please be delivered from that. Resistance doesn't mean stop. Of course, the enemy is going to block you. But in knowing that when you're planning for next year, when you're planning and writing your visions, plan for the resistance. I told you that with me going to school. Ultimately, they were like, well, you got to pay X, Y, and Z. I planned for it. So if money's the issue, pay for it. Let's go. You can't block me. If it's money you need, let's go. You want me to write an appeal? Let's go. What you want to do? Everything you tell me no to, I have a rebuttal for. Because I planned and I discerned and knew that the spirit of resistance was going to try to stop me. But I planned for that too. That's where we're going. This is why this is strategy. And what we do is different because we're being very strategic. So many people are like, I'm taking a leap of faith, but you didn't plan for the problems. Plan for the problems. Anywho, I digress. God bless you, Andre. I see your comment. Ruthie, I see yours. Yes, yes, yes. Aaliyah, I see your hand up. We got 10 minutes, y'all, and we can talk. Also, Shalay, if you could put the giving links up for those that want to give, you can sow a seed. You can. Um, and the text message number, it'll be in the comment. But Aaliyah, go ahead, talk to me. Hello. Good morning, everybody. Pastor Good morning. Levi, thank you for this that you share with us today because it's so in sync. Everything you literally just shared with us is things that I've been telling myself this week and things that I've been experiencing in this season. Mm -hmm. um, yep, yep. After the message on Sunday, I was just having my moments with God. Yeah. And prior to that, I was feeling the need to just humble myself before God. Mm. And I was like, you know, I need to fast, but I don't know when I need to fast. So Sunday I ate and I was like, you know what? I don't want this. Like, yeah. I don't feel, I have no, no desire for this food. So I was mm. like, okay, I think I need to fast. Yes. Right. So I began fasting and I'm like, wow, because this song I've been listening to the entire week by William McDowell, some things I, I can't love him. see until I bow. And I'm mm -hmm. like, until I humble myself, I can see so many things clearly, mm -hmm. right? I've been experiencing like, people just distancing themselves from me. And I'm like, I have the wisdom to know that nothing is wrong with them. I'm just entering a new season. Yes. Because I've experienced it before. So I'm like, God, this is a new season that I'm going into. I don't know what is at the end of this, but I know that I need to humble myself. Mm -hmm. I know mm -hmm. that I need to plan for my next in this season. And yep. like you say, it's a Barton season. So everything you said, Today, it's in sync with what I'm experiencing. And um, you were saying that your word will not return void. Stop sowing seeds of discord and strife. I made a TikTok literally this week about that. Your word not returning, his word not returning void. And stop mm -hmm. wishing bad on people. Because if you, if you wish bad on people, if you sow seeds, like that, you will reap seeds like that. Exactly. Yeah. And after that, you know, I had a lot of people, not a lot of people messaging me and calling me and saying, thank you for this word and stuff like that. I love your videos and how many followers you have. I'm like, yo, I only have like 90 something followers on TikTok mm -hmm. and I don't even care about followers. I know mm -hmm. I'm just good at speaking. Yeah. I've always been good at speaking and I've shy away from that for a very long time. And I'm like, you know what? Some people need to hear what yep. I have to say. Mm -hmm. So I don't care if it's a, a, a few people see what I have to say, but it might touch somebody because I've been speaking to people and I'm telling people that you're, you not being the person that you were ordained to be will cause somebody mm -hmm. not being the person they were born to be because mm -hmm. creation is in sync. So I'm like, you know, I got, I'm just gonna 
whenever I get the time, whenever you lead me to say something, I will say it. Yep, yep authentically and unapologetically because somebody it might be what somebody needs to experience the transformation that they yeah. need so thank you so much today for this message it helps yes. me to know that i'm in sync and in alignment with what god is doing in this season yes ma'am and thank you for sharing and just to encourage you again just as you said with speaking this is for everybody I didn't plan to share this today. Literally, the Lord said it was as simple as that. Speaking to their September. What does that mean, Lord? <laughs> you know what? I guess. So and he speaks and he said, OK, use this scripture. You just do that. But I want you all to know as your pastor, coach, mentor, what have you, the same way that I yield to what I'm hearing God say and you see the fruit. So you're now saying thank you to me for it confirming for you but it's vice versa. And now when you speak to other people, it's the same way. So let that encourage you all. Anthony, I see your hand and then Ruthie. I'm sorry. There I'm you here. go. How are you doing this morning? <laughs> yeah, I was, I was, I'm at the gym. I was in the middle of a set as I was listening. No um, worries. Uh, one of the things you mentioned was uh, that that one line of not necessarily needing permission from God. And I wanted to extrapolate from that because mm -hmm. one of the things that happens so often is when it's time to do good, time to bless, we find ourselves, well, let me pray about this. Let me make sure God is right. wanting me to move in the right direction for somebody house next door to me that just got burned out. They don't have any clothes. They don't have anything to eat. But let me pray to see if I need to take them some food. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I need to pray to, you know, I got three cars. Let me see if I need to pray to let them use one of my cars. Let me see if I need. There are things that, as you said, we've been equipped with. We've been blessed with. We've yeah. sown seeds for. We've reaped the harvest. So now when it's time to do the benevolent work of the spirit, He's already equipped you to do this. What are you mm -hmm. waiting for the right sign to do those levels of things? Right. And so that was one of the things I had always told folks. Sometimes you got to be in a position to be ready because when the time comes, there's not time to run to your closet. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hopefully right, right. Been there. I have been in the, in the, in the uh, convenience store on so many occasions, Pastor, mm -hmm. and seen somebody go up there and say, I need $3 on X, Y, Z. And the spirit has moved into me and say, you know, $3 ain't going to get you up to the red light. So I've gone up <laughs> to the counter and said, hey, can you add $15 more to uh, that pump that was just right there? Yeah. On, on, on several occasions. Yeah. I was at the convenience store just a, a few days ago, and one guy, card, he didn't have a lot. He had like a drink or something to eat or whatever, whatever. Yeah, mm -hmm. and his card kept declining. And so, and part of it was my uh, narcissism, because I can't stand to be the lady. So <laughs> rather than you keep standing up there and, and looking at it, whatever, whatever, I say, oh, ma'am, can, can you just put his on my card? And right, after right, the right. transact was gone, when we looked at each other, come to find out it was a former uh, co-worker of mine mm -hmm. <laughs> at the gym, you know what I mean? So again, I didn't stand there and pray, say, oh, Lord, should I do this? I don't know if I should or not. It was like spirit moved. There was an opportunity. It's many times when the opportunity presents itself, we have to be in a position of being ready. And exactly. then my next thing, Pastor, is a praise report. You know, mm -hmm. we prayed on, over my, my, you know, we prayed over my my car last week, right? Yep. And I don't think uh, after I got off the phone, I kept trying to reach my mechanic. Come to find out, he has been in Florida for over a month mm. at a specialist hospital with his wife. Oh wow! And she's had several issues and what have you, from uh, several damaged vertebrae, I think cracked or fractured to some cancerous thing, I think he said cervical, and just been there for a month treating this. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, wow. So I didn't go, man, look at my break. I just began to pray for the brother. You know, yeah. I sent him some positive things or whatever, whatever, which he thanked me for. I told him, I was like, you know that hospital has a chapel. I suggest you use it regularly. Mm -hmm. I say, just mm -hmm. escape from all of it and just go down there and just pour your heart out, whatever, whatever. And so then I was like, now you got to call a commercial company, bro. I was like, well, Lord, if you if that's what we got to do, we got to pray. So I called the company, 
They said we ain't got no room on our yard for at least a week. I was like, dude, by the time I Uber back and forth to work in a week, I'm going to be broke. <laughs> so right. I told him, I was like, I really don't think my issue is transmission wise. I think it's just a boat and selector that come loose because the thing is just very loose. See, that's where I was. I was literally, you know, metaphorically speaking, a block from where he was. Mm -hmm. So he says, Well, at lunch, we'll just come by your house. I said, Well, I'm not home. He said, Well, I said, the keys are in the ashtray. They literally fixed it in less than two hours, and the total wow. cost was $75. Wow. Wow, wow. I was expecting seventeen hundred for whatever it was. You know what I mean? <laughs> right, but right. Fixed it in the driveway and told me seventy five dollars. So I'm just here to tell y'all, depending and leaning and trusting in God for everything, even something as mundane as something man made mm -hmm. and mechanical, mm -hmm. if it affects your situation, your ministry, whatever it is, he's going to step in. One thing yes. that is recorded in Old Testament and New Testament, God hears every time you pray. Yes. But here's the kicker. He responds. Yes. We yes. learned that with Daniel. He responds even before we get finished saying, Heavenly Father, I come to you. It yes. was recorded in Daniel. He says, when you started praying, I had already released it. Yep. But like you yep. alluded to in this thing, when we get the resistance, that's because the enemy knows what we're about to do is going to damage his kingdom. Exactly. It is going to reduce his kingdom. It is going to cancel his agenda. And he's got to fight even in the heavenly. We think he's just fighting with us, but it's recorded mm -hmm. in Daniel. He was fighting in the heavenly mm -hmm. with, <laughs> with the angels trying to get it to Daniel. But as you can see, God's word does not return void. It does not fail. And that's the yes, praise sir. report I want to give, Pastor. Thank you. Yes, sir. No, I appreciate you sharing that. And I'm sure it encouraged everyone. I've seen the hearts and all that go up. But yes, that's another example. His word does not return voice. So y'all let that be a test word again to push through resistance, prepare for resistance, but push, push. And like he said too, the bill wound up being way less than he, he, he thought. So don't let the enemy try to make you think stuff that's not accurate. Half of the warfare we deal with is people and things that aren't even real. Here it is again. Yea, though I walk the valley of the shadow of death. It's not death. It's only a shadow. But the enemy will magnify the shadow to make you feel like it's bigger than what it really is. So plan for the resistance, but push through the resistance and understand it's only a shadow. Ruthie, talk to me real quick, and then we will wrap up. Yes, hi. Good morning. Good morning. So, um, I'm currently, so I, I want to just say this real quick. I'm trying to just wrap it, like say it in a nutshell. So yeah. when I came back from vacation, while I was on vacation, I had to go to the emergency room because I've been dealing with like glass, a piece of glass underneath my foot that's been giving me a hard time trying to find out whether it's come out or not come out. So I was in the ER like the last day. I ended up coming back from vacation. And when my vacation was over, I decided that I wanted to stay a little longer in Florida because a friend had mm -hmm. extended a stay for me there. While okay. I was there, I um, had to go to the ER to deal with the foot pain. And they had to cut a, mm -hmm. a piece of my skin out to try to remove this glass. So while I was trying to leave, I know I noticed that I just was becoming very tired and weary and a lot of things that were happening. And when I came back from Florida, I realized that I started feeling sick. And on my birthday, I got diagnosed with COVID, which was two oh, days ago. So I've been battling trying to deal with the fact that I stayed longer in Florida. Mm -hmm. I'm dealing with this foot issue. I caught COVID on my birthday. I lost my income. I have a zero income right now. And um, I came back, of course, everybody knows you come back, you got the bills in the in the mailbox waiting for you. And you're like, oh, right. because you're like, OK, all these bills just came and I just lost my unemployment income. Mm -hmm. And by then I was thinking, OK, now I have to like recertify, re get accepted, which now I'm in the process of doing now, trying to mm -hmm. get certified because I am head of household. And um, I pay all the bills alone. What the thing that was hard for me out of all this was that. Because I caught COVID, my son that lives with me had to go stay with a friend. Mm. And I've been working really hard with my son 
trying to get him to um to stay here and and you know like not go and do any sleepovers or hangouts yeah. or anything like that because he's been kind of coming home very late like two o'clock two a.m. and such. But mm-hmm. the reason why I just feel like so I don't know defeated. I know God is trying to show me something. It's because just last night I was like, God, I don't care. Like I was just starting to feel like this is hard. I don't want to do this yeah. anymore. You know, and it's because I was like so many back to back things came about after I had this beautiful vacation from my, with mm-hmm. my the son, Jeremiah. Him and I went mm-hmm. to the Bahamas. We had such a nice time. By the way, I did find my social and driver's license. It was not stolen. Thank God. Good, but good. the thing that is so hard is because I was at such a good level. And then mm-hmm. I just did this too many I'm sorry. Too many no, things came back to back. Now I feel like so defeated. And it's like, my son, I know he's going to come back because I have COVID. So I know that he's just going to wait for this to be out. But it was hard mm-hmm. because all I had COVID, like I said to myself, have I not extended my stay? I should have just went home. I should have just went home. Why did I extend my stay thinking that I mm-hmm. needed to get away and I needed a little time, which while I was down there, something happened and it caused me to react like this wasn't the right thing for me to do is stay longer, God. Mm-hmm. So when I came back, I got overwhelmed by everything. The last thing I thought I had COVID and my friend where I was staying, she got sick and got COVID and didn't tell me. So I was just like, okay. Finally, I'm like, hey, you know, I got COVID. And she's like, oh, you know, like, it, it was nothing. Like, if we caught, like, a runny nose from each other. Mm-hmm. And it was interesting because it allowed me to see, like, that wasn't a true friend, number one. Mm-hmm. And so many things that came back to back. I just said, God, I just want that closure, that peace with you again, God. Because mm-hmm. every time I've tried, it's been a rough year for me. Yeah, but every yeah. time I'm trying to like get closer to God is so many distractions. It feels overwhelming to just want to stop. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just, yeah. Up because I'm not perfect. I, and I'll never be perfect, but I I just I don't know today. I, I just wanted to connect with you guys. Absolutely. And listen, definitely I'm gonna pray with you. Um but two things, one, like we already addressed, the spirit of resistance anytime you're trying to do better. And like you said, you just had a great vacation, all of that. But then the other thing is the spirit of retaliation. So even in this preparing, this is for everybody, but specifically you, Ruthie, in our preparation and discerning the times and the seasons, we have to also plan for the spirit of retaliation. And what I mean by that is not also saying, oh, I got money aside for this, just within yourself. Because the moment you said that, when I came back from Mexico, the spirit of retaliation tried to hit me. It tried to hit me. Same thing. I'm like, I got to go back to work. I got to do this. I got to, you know, but you have to just prepare your mind and stay in that space. It was for me, what I did was because I just love the culture. Um, and I think I told you all that's not made a playlist for where I wanted to be. I said, well, I might not be able to be in Mexico right now on the Pacific Ocean, but that doesn't mean I can't make a playlist and put it in my ear and feel like I'm in Mexico. I'm just using that as a point of reference, despite everything, while you're still in this process and God is going to get you out. Don't stop pushing. Keep pushing, but you got to now find ways within your reasoning, if it's songs, to drown out the lie of the enemy. Because although this did happen to you, don't let the enemy plague on your mind now. And like you said, say, well, maybe I shouldn't have went. Well, maybe I shouldn't have done this. Well, maybe I shouldn't have. No, you did what you were supposed to do. You were where you were supposed to be. And life happens. But when life happens, now let's find a new plan. It's more the shock of it all. Right. And I acknowledge how you feel. I get it. It's the shock of it all. And the not, you know, being prepared for that, so to speak. But understand you are still right on track. And I promise you this hard season that you have been in is just that a season and seasons change and your change is coming. And that's why even we started today, I said we cannot compare 
time frames, because if you compare time frames, it'll burden you. But your season is coming. Your time is coming. And even like you said with your friend, God is revealing to you the heart and the motive of the people around you. So although when you see certain things that people do that you have love for, it hurts. Of course it hurts. But then you have to stop and say, but God, thank you for revealing the intent of their heart. It shocked me. I didn't want to see that. I didn't want to know that. But now that I do know, help me to process so I can now move on. And now when I go on my next vacation, I know who to partner with and who not to partner with. So again, it all is trying and it doesn't feel good. But even in that, there are spaces and moments to rejoice. So let's pray real quick, y'all. Father, we just thank God for the life of Ruthie. And Father, I'm decreeing and declaring that every challenge that she is facing, that she will be able to extrapolate the life lessons out of it. Father, I bind up the hand of the spirit of resistance that is trying to block her from her next and from her change and from her transition into the, to the better. And I also bind the hand of retaliation that is trying to come against her mind and her her physical body. I speak to her cells and I command her cells and her immune system to be strengthened by the divine providence of God to fight against this COVID-19 uh, uh, COVID and any other ailment that might try to come against her physical body. Father, I speak to her brain. I speak to her mind. I speak to her nervous system and I command the stress and the presser to be relieved right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I speak to her mind and I command like we've talked before in the brain with neural pruning and plasticity that her neural pruning would be activated to cut away all of the negative things and the occurrences that the enemy has tried to put against her but we activate neuroplasticity which is the rewiring of the brain to accommodate the revelation of the Lord and we add peace to her we speak joy to her we speak vision to her when she is is able to see past the pain and see that even in the midst of COVID, God is yet keeping her. Even in the midst of disappointment, God has never let her go. Even in the midst of trials and tribulations, she still has breath in her body. And Father, I decree and declare that her greater days are on the way. Her better days are on the way. And that everything <laughs> that she has been through will simply be a testimony to, to, to brag on the providential hand of God and to brag on his goodness and his mercy. And I decree and declare over her son, I believe his name is Justin, that he will be covered even during this time of being separated while his mom heals. I decree and declare that Justin's steps are ordered. He will not waver. He will not falter. He will not get caught up in things that are not beneficial to his growth and development, but he is covered by the hand of God. And any demonic force that will try to plague his mind, we rebuke it and renounce it now but as a family father we decree and declare that every resisting power would be removed from them and that even today i'm decreeing and declaring that even today you are moving on the hearts of the people who are supposed to collaborate with her for partnerships and direction and help and assistance as she moves forward. But again, Father, I bind the hand of the enemy that is trying to plague her mind. In the words of T.D. Jakes, woman, you are loosed. Your mind is loosed. Your, your, your capacity is loosed. And the enemy does not have reins over your mind, your body, and your soul. You are healed. You are free. And you are being delivered into this next season of harvest, even in the midst of this, because of your prayers, you will see a harvest. You will receive a harvest and it cannot be otherwise. Whatever's not mentioned, Father, make intercession on her behalf. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Ruthie, I know it's hard. And I think I saw Nadine and some others be sure that you all connect because there's power in community. There's power in togetherness. Um, to stay connected, y'all. You all should see each other's information in the group on Facebook. But if not, inbox each other, find each other, collaborate, and hold each other up. 
But Ruthie, you're gonna be all right. Trust me. I understand. I told you my mother's story. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm the product of a single mother. We've had our lights cut off. We've been evicted. We've had cars repossessed. We've had to go uh to McDonald's and get off the dollar menu and but then go home to no electricity and try to get ice from the gas station to put in there to keep the stuff cold so the food or the rest of the food didn't spoil. So trust me, I'm not just speaking to you as a pastor. I'm speaking to you as a person and a byproduct who lived through it. We've lived through this stuff. I've had my own personal cars we possess, but God will keep you as long as you got your mind. And like I've even said last week, as long as you have an ear to hear and a mouth to speak, you will be okay. Just guard your mind, find some music, find some, you just got to guard the mind. Even to this day, I'm having to guard my mind with stuff. Just last night, I felt the enemy trying to, oh, this, 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 this pressure of going to the next. There's more of this you got to do. You got more responsibility with this. It's pressure. No matter where you are in life, there's going to always be a level of pressure. But you have okay. to push through it. Amen. Yes. Amen. Prevail, prevail, prevail. But you got this. You got this. You got this. All right, y'all. Well, listen, I love y'all. I'm going to get this uploaded. Again, your assignment is to plan. You got four days to plan before it's September. Write the areas you want to change and birth out and start looking for the scriptures like the ones I gave you. I'll give them to you one more time before we go. There was Matthew 6 and 13, which speaks of Jesus criticizing the religious leaders for not being able to interpret the signs of the times. Also examine Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8 about understanding the times and seasons of everything. And first Thessalonians five, one through six, that encourages us as believers to be watchful and sober minded. Um, um, so that way we're aware of the signs of the times that we are living in. And I just want to stress one more time. Um, just just be mindful, be watchful. There's strange leadership out here, strange things are happening. But you will always remain at the cutting edge if you just discern the times. Pay attention to the trees. Pay attention to the winds. Pay attention and ask God, what is this symbolic of in my own life? So here it is again, the ninth month of the year. Yes, I'll give them one more time. No worries with your good. The scriptures again were Matthew 16 and 3. It was Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8, and it was 1 Thessalonians, that's a tongue tie, twister, Thessalonians, Thessalonians, <laughs> 1 Thessalonians 5, 1 through 6, 5, 1 through 6, and those are just some scriptures, again, to look at as it relates to discerning the time, being watchful, being sober-minded, All prime example, and I'll say this real quick, Ruthie, like you just, we were just talking about. There it is, 1 Thessalonians, about being sober-minded. The enemy wants to use all these external forces to cause our minds to not be sober and panic that we can't think and process through that which is happening. So yes, yeah, study those. Understand what the month of September represents, the number nine in biblical numerology. Biblical, because someone told me one day about numerology. We're not talking about sorcery and witchcraft and voodoo. We're talking about the, the sim, symbolism of biblical numbers and what it represents. Um, and then there were other scriptures about the fruit of the spirit and all that stuff, but y'all will catch that on the replay. Amen. Well, I love y'all. I don't even know what I'm calling this message. Y'all will see it when I put it up. <laughs> but I love y'all. Again, thank you so much for being here. We'll see you same time next week. I'll see y'all November 3rd. I can't wait to see you. I'll have hotel information and all that very soon. Um, but I'm super, super excited to see you all, hug you all, do the life with you all. And um, yeah, also the announcement has been made yet. If anybody's in San Antonio, Texas, I think I'm coming back to San Antonio, Texas next month for a conference and event, but I'm waiting for them to confirm it and I'll share it. So if you're in the area, come holla at me. Also, next month, I'll be in California for a service. Um, I just forget the area. I think it's like McFarland or Sel. I don't know. I'll let y'all know. But that's supposed to be happening next month. Um, but that's that. 
Love y'all long time. <laughs> Have a great week, you all. And here's to birthing out next month. Every goal, every dream that you have. Peace.